The biggest movies of last year had some pretty amazing moments, and we've devoured hours of blockbuster excellence in order to experience the best. Here are some of the most epic movie moments from 2018 that are either pause-worthy in order to take it all in, or deserve a rewind to watch again. T'Challa's little sister Shuri is an engineering genius, so when she shows off all the technical gadgets she's invented to help her big brother be the Black Panther, there are definitely a bunch of moments when you might want to pause and examine each invention a little more closely. Fully automated. Like the old American movie Baba used to watch. But the most rewind-worthy moment comes towards the end of the scene, when T'Challa is checking out his new Black Panther suits. At first, Shuri implores him to give the suit a kick, and it goes flying. But as Shuri explains, the suit has absorbed the kinetic energy left by T'Challa's kick, and the suit glows purple with its building strength. Then, Shuri asks him to attack again. Delete that footage. Shuri and the audience erupt in laughter at the sight of the Great Black Panther, leveled by a suit on a mannequin. It's a moment that's definitely worth a rewatch. Watching Avengers Infinity War, it's hard to say if anyone really believed that Thanos was going to succeed in his plot to wipe out half the population of the universe. But then he got all six Infinity Stones into that gauntlet, and, well, everyone knows what happened next. After the snap, the dusting begins. First to go is Bucky, followed by Black Panther, Groot, Scarlet Witch, and Falcon. Out in space, Mantis, Drax, Star-Lord, and Doctor Strange dissolve into space dust. But the most crushing dusting has got to be that of Spider-Man, whose pleading with Tony Stark is absolutely tragic. I don't want to go. I don't want to go, sir. Please. Please, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. How many people paused on Parker's heartbreaking final moments? We can only guess. Hopefully, we'll find out soon enough if our favorite Avengers are saved when Avengers Endgame hits theaters. There are a few pretty awesome pause-worthy moments in Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom, 2018's sequel to 2015's follow-up to the original Jurassic Park franchise. This new movie introduced another scary dinosaur hybrid, the Indoraptor, which, when it's finally revealed, deserves a good pause just so we can get a good look at it. But Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom's most pause-worthy moment comes around the middle of the film, when Claire, Owen, and their gang try to evacuate the remaining dinos before a volcano eruption kills them. But the bigger dinosaurs move more slowly, and one unlucky Brachiosaurus doesn't make it off the island. In the saddest moment of the movie, the poor guy is engulfed in smoke, and we hear a final, heartbreaking bellow from the beast before he collapses into the cloud of ash. It deserves a pause just so we can get in a moment of mourning before moving on to more action. For technically being part of the X-Men franchise, there are surprisingly few X-Men characters in the first Deadpool movie, a fact which Deadpool isn't shy about pointing out. It's a big house. It's funny that I only ever see two of you. It's almost like the studio couldn't afford another X-Men. But Deadpool 2 takes it a bit further and adds a fun cameo. When Colossus brings a severely injured Wade back to the X-Mansion, Wade remarks again at the lack of X-Men characters willing to make an appearance in his knockoff X-Men movie, which is exactly when they appear. They can't just dust off one of the famous X-Men. How about that Potts with the giant pigeon wings? What do those do anyway, huh? Carry him three feet off the ground to snatch up the nearest muffin crumb? The fun gag is worth a pause just so we can check out who's in the room. Xavier, Beast, Quicksilver, Cyclops, Storm, and Nightcrawler. The latest installment of the Mission Impossible franchise features some of the most intense action sequences in movie history. The biggest and most talked about has got to be the Halo Jump star Tom Cruise takes from a plane flying 25,000 feet in the air. The detail behind what it took to capture the jump on film are absolutely insane. Cruz is the first actor to perform such a stunt, which is saying a lot about his willingness to capture authenticity. He and the crew took over 100 jumps to get the scene just right, while every other jump required at least 20 minutes of oxygen prep. And since the shot used in the movie happens at sunset, they only had one chance per day to actually shoot the scene. It's pause-worthy just because of how stunning the whole thing is, and because once you watch it, you simply have to know how it was done.
Like the first movie, Marvel's Ant-Man and the Wasp is filled with light-hearted and hilarious moments that counter the more dire and serious aspects of the Marvel Universe. When Luis gets captured by Sonny Birch, he's given a truth serum and forced to divulge all he knows about Scott Lang. But this is Luis, Scott's blunt yet hilarious best friend. So when he's given a truth serum, you can bet he's going to tell you everything. Luis's story goes all the way back to when he and Scott met in person, complete with an enormous curly wig then through his relationships with Hope. And then Scotty's like, you know what, girl, my heart is all broken, and I'll probably never find love again, but damn if I want to kiss you! The whole scene is definitely the funniest sequence in the film, one that you'll probably want to rewatch. Throughout the Star Wars prequel Solo, A Star Wars Story, Amelia Clark's Kira and Paul Bettany's Dryden Vaz make references to a higher criminal organization known as Crimson Dawn. During the climax of the film, Kira slays Dryden and abandons the love of her life, Han Solo. It's at that point that she pledges allegiance to Crimson Dawn via hologram, and a familiar face pops up in the holographic communication device, Darth Maul. It was a moment that left audience members collectively gasping, but also asking, how? Casual Star Wars movie viewers will recall that Darth Maul met his end at the hands of Obi-Wan Kenobi during The Phantom Menace, but fans of the animated series Clone Wars and Rebels know that Maul survived his fall and became a crime boss who runs the organization known as the Shadow Collective, which in turn runs Crimson Dawn. Meanwhile, Solo takes place a couple of decades after The Phantom Menace. Maul's reveal is definitely a plausible moment, if only for fans to try and figure out if they're really seeing who they think they're seeing, and work out the timeline of how the former Sith Lord turned crime boss ended up there. Tom Hardy's Venom was one of the weirdest movie experiences of last year, and very much one of the most bizarre Marvel-inspired movies that has ever existed. Fans can't seem to decide if it was amazing or awful, intentionally campy or just bad all around. But it does feature one of the most talked-about moments of the cinematic year, the Eddie Brock and Venom makeout session. Mm. 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 Was it really between Eddie and Venom? Was it between Eddie and his ex-girlfriend Anne? All we know is, when Venom is inhabiting Anne's body, Venom leans in for a deep and intense full-tongue kiss. Considering that Venom is in charge whenever it's inhabiting someone, it certainly seems like it was Venom who made the call to go in deep. Puck her up. Through its use of sound, A Quiet Place became one of the most innovative horror films in years. John Krasinski's directorial debut told the story of a family struggling to survive after a race of alien invaders took over the planet. The creatures use sound to find their prey, so being absolutely quiet is essential to survival. The lack of sound in much of the film makes the suspenseful moments even more intense and allows the tension to build. But the most pause-worthy moment comes right at the end, when the mother Evelyn and her deaf daughter Reagan face off against the creatures one final time. Reagan realizes a cochlear implant can be altered to emit a high-pitched sound that wounds the creatures. Upon doing so, the one hunting them opens up its face to reveal the inner workings of the alien beast. Until that point, the creatures had stayed mostly in the shadows, but this close look provides the best detail of the entire movie. It's a shot you definitely want to pause just to get a good look, before Evelyn blows its head off. If you love Queen, then you probably loved Bohemian Rhapsody. Any of the musical moments in this film are rewind-worthy, particularly the recording session of Bohemian Rhapsody itself. But the most epic scene in the entire movie is definitely the closing sequence, which revolves around the band's decision to perform at Live Aid, a giant charity concert that took place simultaneously in London and Philadelphia in 1985. The movie pretty much recreates Queen's entire performance, and Rami Malek has said he considers the concert the most important scene in the film, telling Cinema Blend, It is a culmination of what the trials and tribulations were that got them there in the first place, and they still have something monumental to overcome. So I think if you look at this film, a lot of it is about overcoming adversity and challenging every aspect of yourself and your friends. The 2018 Halloween is technically a direct sequel to the 1978 original, even though there have been six other movies between them. This retconning of the series brings back Jamie Lee Curtis as Laurie Strode, and adds a daughter named Karen and a granddaughter named Allison. The story follows the return of Michael Myers as he escapes from a prison transport and heads out on a killing spree on the hunt for Laurie. Jamie Lee Curtis plays Laurie, now in her 60s, with a world weariness and severe PTSD, and she certainly has some moments of badassery in the movie. But the moment many fans talked about most has more to do with the usually sweet Judy Greer. But though Laurie's daughter was taken from her at an early age, Karen comes through for her in a clutch moment. I'm sorry, I can't do it! 
gotcha. The level of ridiculousness in the Meg reaches pretty epic proportions, but despite being pretty goofy, the movie is still a whole lot of fun. Jason Statham stars as a guy trying to capture and kill a really big shark, a megalodon to be precise, and that's about the entire premise. But what it lacks in story, it makes up for by just going all the way. The most epic scene in the entire movie comes about midway through, when the gang of shark hunters has captured the Meg and strung the prehistoric creature up on their boat, or at least they think they've captured the Meg. Oh, yeah! The Meg took a crazy premise and made it even crazier by making its massive villain even bigger. There's nothing more exciting than a good movie gunfight, but the one-sided showdown from Hold the Dark isn't your typical Hollywood shootout. This incredibly tense scene finds a group of ill-equipped cops facing a very angry man with a very big machine gun. His name is Cheon, and when the police roll into his icy little village, looking to arrest him and his friend for murder, he opens up his second-story window and unleashes hell with an M60. The entire scene is nothing but ice, blood, adrenaline, and fear. Bodies drop left and right, and the soundtrack is filled with screaming men as Cheon shoots them over and over again. It's like watching a clip from Saving Private Ryan, and by the time the police put Cheon down, we need to hit the pause button so we can slow down our heart rate and try to get our breath back. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite movies are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.